What's up everybody, Unrested back again, and we are doing part three of working in Japan, a JFAC that continuously moves through the different steps of what you would do to need to get a job here, what you would do, what possible options are, and how you're going to go about doing that. Um, if you haven't already watched part one and two, I highly suggest you do that to catch up to where we are now. Part three, where you are already in Japan or have gotten a job that has moved you to Japan. Um, we're assuming either two dichotomies of what way you took to get here. Either one, you got a tourist visa, headed over here and started looking for jobs. Totally okay. No, you do not need to leave the country if you get your tourist visa switched over to a work visa. That used to be the case, it is no longer the case. Um, or you got over here via a company that hired you overseas. Um, I think common in America, Canada, and Australia, possibly New Zealand, possibly the UK, I do not know. Uh, commenters from those countries, please let, please let me know. Um, please tell me in the comments below. Anyway, let's move on from there. Uh, I'm going to try and cover both pathways as well as I can. Uh, the one where you're here with a company and the one here where you're looking for your company. No matter what, um, you're coming over here and you're looking for your first place to live. Um, some companies will set that up for you. That is handy. Um, but I do not suggest you stay in a company apartment for very long. Um, what are the reasons for this? Well, number one, uh, most companies do overcharge you for the place that you're staying in, and they are taking a chunk out of your salary in which to let you stay there. Um, I would say also the other problem that you run into is that, hold on, a little windy out here. I'd say the other problem you run into is that uh, when you do decide to switch jobs or change jobs, which you most likely will if you find one that pays better, and there are many more that pay better, um, you need to get out of their apartment immediately after that. I mean, not immediately, but they're probably only going to give you like a month. Um, I think by Japanese law, um, they're supposed to give you three months. That might not always be the case. They might not follow that rule. Um, I wouldn't trust it. Let's put it that way. Um, so my suggestion right away is to look for your own place to live. Uh, don't, don't rely on the place that the company gives you. Um, if you're coming here looking for a job, I would say your best bet to do is uh, start with a share house. A share house is one usually in which multiple gaijin live in and uh, has staff that speaks English. Usually very helpful if you're just starting to learn the language. Now if you already are fluent in Japanese, you of course have a lot more options and probably can even look up Japanese listings, which opens up a whole massive world to you. Um, I think you'll clearly know what to do there if you already speak Japanese and read Japanese because you'll have many more websites to check out. Um, I would say if you are looking into the share house, do a good search and if you can, read some reviews on them before you choose one. Don't just jump into one right away. If you can come to Japan, stay in a hotel and check out share houses before you choose one, I would suggest that even more than just coming over here and jumping right into a share house. Some are very scummy, dirty, and unhygienic. And uh, some, of course, do share the bathroom, some share the kitchen, and uh, most times people do not have a lot of respect for those areas because they're not permanent residents. Um, so just be careful if you are doing the share house thing. Now, next up we're going to have getting a cell phone. Getting a cell phone will probably be the next thing you need to do. You can hire one out at the airport, rent one out at the airport for those Americans who say rent. Um, you could start out with that if you really want to. Um, if you do attain a job or you are already over here on a work visa, a uh, work visa will allow you to go to the ward office and get what's called a Gaijin card. You will apply for a Gaijin card. Um, and actually now, you don't actually go to the ward office now that I think about it. That's back when I went here. You will go to immigration. So here in Osaka, Immigration is out at uh, Cosmo Square. You want to take the Chuo, that's the green line, out to Cosmo Square. Tokyo it differs. You need to go look that up online where immigration is. Uh, and you will apply for your Gaijin card. You will get your Gaijin card the same day. It used to be up to three weeks you used to have to wait. Uh, now it's the same day. You need to bring a picture from a photo booth. That is an official picture. No, you cannot use picture club pictures. You can't use those funny photo booth pictures, the Purikura pictures. Don't ask me if you can use those. You are not that unprofessional, are you? Um, bring in your professional picture. If you already have extra passport pictures, I suggest bringing those. Um, that will be used for your uh, ID card. And um, you'll put that on your card. 
card, they'll put that on your card, really, not you. You're not gonna be making your own cards. It's not an arts and crafts class. And from there, uh, you will be able to use that card to go to your local phone company, um, cell phone company, that is. You have a choice of AU, Docomo, SoftBank. Um, there's a few others that are smaller. Wilcom, I think. And there might be another one out there that I don't know about, but whatever, those are the main ones. If there's more than that, they're going to be very small and um, possibly proprietary to an area. Go out to those. The first thing they're going to need is at least some piece of mail, an address, uh, your Gaijin card, uh, your passport, and uh, you're going to have to fill out paperwork and usually pay a first fee to get that phone. Um, you're looking at about $90 to $100 to get your first phone. Uh, you can, of course, just get the starter phone that they want to start you off with, which is very, very cheap. Um, but, of course, if you want to look into a more expensive phone, like a smartphone, um, it's going to cost you a little bit more. You know, it's up to you what you choose. Uh, I would start with as low of a budget as you possibly could and save as much as you could. Your first couple months are going to be the hardest couple months in Japan. Save, save, save. Um, next up, you're going to go look for some internet, most likely, because I don't know how the heck... I guess aside from going to an internet cafe, which if you have close to you, I suggest using for the first few days that you're there. Internet in Japan is very different from internet in America and how you get it set up. Um, in America, I'm not sure how it works in other Western countries, but when we call, usually two to three days later, they show up and install it. In Japan, it's sometimes two to three weeks later. Um, people will come to your apartment complex and check to see if they can even hook up uh, DSL or cable. And once they have a found out if you have the right connections at your apartment they'll send another team a few weeks later that team will finally set up your internet um, usually they have to use some sort of modem um, they will not give you a wireless router unless you've special order that and paid a little bit more so possibly buy your own if you know how to set that up and uh, you're usually looking at about anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars a month uh, depending on what speed you purchase um, usually with, I think I paid about $70 down, and uh, from there, usually utilities are set up by your landlord. Um, they just ask that you put your name in it. Um, it's handled so differently at every place I've ever lived. Uh, sometimes the landlord handles it, sometimes the company that's placed me in the apartment handles it. Um, sometimes I've had to handle it myself. Um, one thing I will say is don't let your utilities get turned off. Um, it is a pain in the ass to have to go and get them turned back on. I've never had it happen, um, but I've had a few friends who have, and they said it's hell to try and find the place that you have to go and pay in person then. So don't do it. Pay your bills. And let's see, I think that about covers it for this little session. Um, I think we can probably move on to a part four of starting to get acclimated with the places around you, uh, shopping, essentials that you'll need to buy, where to get furniture, how to live cheap, and continuing on from there. Guys, I saw there's a few questions in the comments below on the videos from yesterday, good questions. Um, I think after I finish video number four or maybe five, at the end of the week here, I would like to do a final close-up conclusion video that answers every single question in those, and that will just be me standing in front of my camera, holding my iPhone and looking at your questions and just reading them off verbatim and answering them. So I do plan to answer every single thing you ask. Till next time, I'm Unrested. This is JFAC. Please like, comment, and subscribe.